Church has already been good, hasn't it? Praise the Lord. What a, uh, that was a good worship, good um, message there. All right, are y'all ready to get into the word? I told a uh, pastor this week from Sunday, and I'll just tell you um, how many of you ha- did not hear the message on Sunday. So not very many, most did. I encourage you to listen to it and to go back and listen to it again and again and again and again. And I was showing him my notes, and I said it was like a fire hose. Did y'all feel like that on Sunday? There was so much life flowing from here. And, you know, we don't... um, The Lord is faithful to speak to us while we're in here, right? And we make note of it and we write it down. But there's so much more. We don't get everything just in one sitting, you know? And so I I showed him my uh, my notes here, some things that I wrote down. And then I was showing him uh, these scriptures... And that's, that's usually w- what I do. And, and so during the week, uh, that's part of my devotion time. I go back and I flesh out or I write out those scriptures. You know, a form of, that's a form of meditation for me uh, to look at it in, in the Word. I wrote the references down when he was talking about it, but I didn't write anything else down on some of them at a time. I'm just talking in ways... Um, to help us get the word in us, right? And, uh, and so I was telling someone earlier this week that's just a, a good way that I meditate is I take the scriptures and I actually, I look at them, I say them out loud, I write them, I look at them, I write them out again. Anyway, just a tip, all right? All right, so... Uh, I said it was like a water hose. This may seem like a water hose tonight because we're going to go fast. Are y'all ready? Man, say, I am ready. ready. Amen. So, Father, we thank you for your word tonight. And we are asking you for the spirit of wisdom and revelation, the spirit of truth, to flood the eyes of our heart with light in the knowledge of you. And we thank you for it, Father. We thank you for it tonight in Jesus' name. And everyone said amen. So I want you to repeat this after me. I am ready to be taught the word of God. The good news. And it is the power of God unto salvation. And I receive the word with gladness. I have eyes that see. And ears that hear, I hear and obey, because I am a doer of the word. I am who God says I am. I have what God says I have. I can do what God says I can do. I will never ever be the same. In Jesus' name, God will fulfill his purpose for me. Amen. Those are good words to have in our mouths. Amen. Amen. All right. So I'm going to try to stick close to my notes here. So in how God deals uh, with and works with mankind, you know we're on a series, uh, Divine Healing, right? All right. So we're on a series in Divine Healing. We're going to be uh, having the words sown sown uh, into us for some weeks and I believe I'm going to say this I believe with all my heart we don't have to wait until six or eight weeks at any point at any point when you're hearing the word and faith comes you can release your faith to receive you do not need anyone to lay your hand their hands on you you just you just reach out and say I receive amen I believe for bodies to be made right Things that are out of line, things that are out of line being put back into line. Body parts that are missing for new body parts to come into being. Amen. Amen. All right. So in how God deals with and works with mankind, there is always a God part and a man's part. Amen. 
God cannot do man's part and man cannot do God's part. God's part is to do the work, to bring the power. He's the one that does the work. Man's part is to believe. So we're going to review, I think. <clears throat> we're going to review very quickly. Um, one of the things Jesus did, we talked about what did Jesus do. And so the, the two things that I talked about that we need to look at, what did Jesus do? Uh, we need to know what Jesus did when he walked the earth, right? And we also need to know what his substitutionary work did at the cross. What, what did that do in us and for us? Amen. So what did Jesus do? We know one of the things that Jesus did was that he revealed the Father unto us. Amen. In seeing what Jesus did in the Gospels, he was the exact, exact expression of who God is. Amen. What he said he only did what he heard he only did what he saw the father do he only said what he heard the father say amen uh, acts 1038 says how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for god was with him Amen. So again, we see here God was with him. God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with power uh, who went about doing good and healing how many? All. All who were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. So we have to be very clear from this scripture as well that oppression comes from the devil. Amen. Oppression is not does not come from God for any reason. Oppression is not sent to teach you anything. Oppression is of the devil. Amen. Amen. It's the thief, the devil, who comes to steal and to kill and destroy. But the Bible says that Jesus came to give us life in abundance to the full till it overflows. Amen. Another thing Jesus did was he went about teaching, preaching, and healing all who were sick. And we talked about this last week, but I want to make a note here that, that Jesus healed. That, that we have many, many scriptures that say he went about doing good and he healed all uh, who were sick. He healed all. <clears throat> We've got to make a note here that Jesus healed all who came to him. For healing. Amen. The Bible also tells us that in his hometown of Nazareth that he could do no mighty work there because of their unbelief. Amen. And then we know about the woman with the issue of blood, which we are going to talk about uh, in the weeks ahead. Uh, but the woman with the issue of blood who kept saying, if I just touch the hem of his garment, that I will be healed. You know that there were, there were many people who were pressing in on Jesus. There were many people there uh, who saw him and who touched him. But in this passage of scripture, it only records that one woman who received healing from him. And Jesus said, your faith has made you whole. Go in peace. So we can be in the presence. Uh, you say, if I, just, if I just saw Jesus, if I could just see him with my eyes, I know that I could be healed. There were many people in that passage of scripture that saw him with their eyes but did not receive healing. She came to him in faith to receive healing. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Uh, so expectation, and I want it, it matters. He healed the ones who came to him for healing. All right, I want to read this and uh, just a little short, short passage out of here. Number one, to whet your appetite. Uh, we talked about three books last week. I encourage you to get them and, and to feed on them, okay? Uh, it says, and this is Mark 6, 50, uh, 6, 53 through 56. I did not give this to the booth. And when they had passed over, they came into the land of, <clears throat> oh, I looked it up of how to say this. Uh, 
Yeah. Gennesaret, something like that, and drew to the shore. And when they were come out of the ship, straightway they knew him and ran, say ran, they ran through that whole region round about and began to carry about in beds those that were sick where they heard he was. And whithersoever he entered into villages or cities or country, they laid the sick in the streets and besought him that they might touch, if it were, but the border of his garment. And as many as touched him were made whole. Again, that's Mark 6, 53 through 56. Uh, verse 55 tells us that the inhabitants of Gethsemane, that's how it is, uh, ran to bring the sick to Jesus. That shows their expectancy. Expectant people run. These people expected something to happen when they brought the sick to Jesus. It, it, ma it matters what we're expecting. It matters what we're expecting. When you come to church services, expect to receive something from God. When prayed for, expect to receive something from God. When you feed on the word, expect to receive something from God. When you ask for something in prayer, expect to receive something from God. Those who expect something, receive something. Those who expect nothing from God, get exactly what they expect, nothing. Amen. Expectation. Expectation. And, and so we talked about what the definition of salvation was. Uh, and there are many references to, uh, to being saved and to salvation in, in the New Testament. And Pastor mentioned the, the definitions as well uh, on Sunday. But the Strong's gives these words and descriptions for salvation. Deliverance, health, preservation, safety, and deliverance this is one of my favorites, deliverance from the molestation of enemies. Amen. 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 Salvation. So when you look it up, look it up when you come across uh, in the Strong's when it says uh, saved or salvation in the New Testament, okay? The Lord Jesus did not just send his spirit to the cross to redeem our spirit from death to life. Amen. He went to the cross to pay for our redemption, spirit, soul, and body. Glory to God. An all-inclusive deliverance. Yeah. Glory to God. Colossians 1.13 in King James says this. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Have you been delivered from the power of darkness? Amen. Hey, if you didn't know that you have, if you are born again, you've been delivered from the power of darkness. And you've been translated into the kingdom of God's dear son. Hallelujah. The Passion reads like this. He has rescued us completely. Say completely. completely. Hallelujah. From the tyrannical rule of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom realm of his beloved son. Amen. Uh, another thing that uh, just in review that we talked about last week was John 8.32, uh, which tells us that we will know the truth and the truth will make us free, right? Uh, I need to back up and read verse 31. So John 8.31 and 32 then Jesus said to those Jews which believed on him. Okay, well, we're not Jews. Uh, we're Christians, right? Born again, grafted in, uh, but we believe on him. Is that right? So he's talking to us. If you, and this is what he said, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. Then... And you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. It's important that we continue. As his disciples, we continue in his word. That we, if you continue in my word, not hit and miss, not ever now and then, but if you continue in my word, then you're my disciples indeed, and then you're going to know the truth, and that truth will make you free. Glory to God. 
glory to God. So I want to talk about tonight establishing God's will to heal. <laughs> establishing God's will to heal. And you say, well, why are we going to talk about this? Uh, because do you realize that there are millions upon millions of even Christians who do not believe that it's God's will to heal? And so we've got to establish this in order for our faith. Have you ever heard this statement that faith begins where the will of God is known? Right? So we can't have faith for anything that we are not convinced it's God's will for us to have. We must have his word on it. And, and so some may say, well, if God wants me healed, if it's his will, then why doesn't he do something? If God wants me healed, and if it's his will, I mean, so we could say, if God wants someone saved, if God wants me to be saved, then why doesn't God just do something about it and save me? But no one thinks like that. Nobody thinks like that where our eternal uh, salvation, our eternal security, as Pastor said on Sunday, no one thinks about that in terms like this because we know that it's up to each individual to call upon the name of the Lord and then they'll be saved. Amen? So it's the same with healing. So we don't want to take the mindset, well, if it's God's will, then why doesn't he just do something and heal me? God did do something. He sent Jesus. Hallelujah. He did do something. He sent Jesus. And not only did the Father put all of our sin upon Jesus, but he put all sickness and all disease upon him. And the Bible says that he bore them away. So we remember that we said with any, everything with God, everything with walking with him, there's a God part, there's a God side, and there's a man's side. God can't do our part and we can't do God's part. We're not the power. We're not the one who works it and makes it happen. But it is faith that accesses the power. Amen. Amen. And so even when, even when we read that it says, daughter, your faith has made you whole. Uh, or your faith, be it unto you according to your faith. Listen, it's not our faith that heals us. It's the power of God that heals us. But our faith is what accesses and opens the door for the power of God to flow on. Glory to God. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. So 1 John 5, 14 through 15 says this. Uh, and this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. Amen. We can be confident. And we must be confident before faith can be released. Amen. So one of my most favorite scriptures where uh, the will of God is concerned healing. Let's look at it. It's Luke chapter 5. When the leper came to him. How many of you are familiar with this story? The leper coming to Jesus. Uh, and it says, uh, while he was in one of the towns, there came a man full of, covered with leprosy. And when he saw Jesus, he fell on his face and implored him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you are able to cure me and to make me clean. And Jesus reached out his hand and touched him, saying, what did he say? I am willing, be cleansed. And immediately the leprosy left him. Um, stay with your notes, Mona. Stay with your notes. God's Word translation. Let me read it out of there. One day Jesus was in a city where there was a man covered with serious skin disease. When the man saw Jesus, he bowed his face to the ground and he begged Jesus, Sir, if you want to, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out and touched him and said, I want to. Say he wants to. Amen. 
Amen. He wants to be clean. The Living Bible says Jesus reached out and touched the man and said, Of course I will be healed. And the leprosy left. Say, of course he will. Of course he will. This, this was part of, of me last week when I talked about being a young child and me trying to reconcile the fact that God would have one will for me in heaven and another will for me on earth because we were taught if it be his will, we were taught God heals some but he doesn't heal others. And so that didn't make sense to me that he would die on the cross from me to take me uh, uh, to heaven where there is no sin, where there is no sin sickness and disease amen so glory to God thank God for the teaching of the word because I found out indeed he doesn't have two sets of wills for me hallelujah hallelujah uh, and you know it's like people quit reading this passage when they pray okay Lord if it be your will what are we saying when we pray, if it be your will, heal me. How are we going to know it's his will if we're playing, uh, praying like that? If we get, so this is what, this is what people do. Uh, if they get healed, then, they, then it's God's will. But if they don't get uh, healed, then they say that it's not God's will. It must have not have been God's will to heal. What is that? Uh, it's walking by sight and not by faith. Is that right? We, we don't check. We don't check our bodies to find out if it's God's will to heal. We check the word. We check the word. Amen. Amen. And so really it is. It's like people quit reading this passage as uh, at if you will. I know you can. I know you can, Jesus, if you will. And it's almost like people just quit reading right there instead of continuing to read and get uh, Jesus' answer on it. I will. Say, he will. He will. Amen. He will. <clears throat> and this just dropped in my heart. Uh, it, you know, and... So I wrote this down. Um, if we don't believe that it's God's will to heal, but we do everything we can to get healed, we go to the doctor, we take medications, we take treatments, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but if, we, if, if we're saying it, it's not God's will to heal, but I'm doing everything that I can to, to get well, then what I'm saying is that man loves and cares for people more than God does. <clears throat> and so I say, I'll take responsibility for my healing because you just never know what God is going to do. And that's pride. That's pride. Matthew 7, 11, if you then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask? Amen. But how are we going to ask and how are we going to come to him? In faith. For us to receive anything, we must come in faith. And for us to come in faith, then we have to be convinced of what his will is. Amen. And, and it's, all, it's all in the Word. It's all in His Word. Say, it's in the Word. Uh, Pastor talked about Jehovah Rapha on Sunday. Woo! How many is going to listen to it again? Well, a few of us. Okay. Malachi 3 6, when we're talking about uh, <clears throat> God's will to heal, when we talk about Jesus walking upon the earth and he went about healing all who were oppressed of the devil, healing all those who came to him, he healed them. Amen. Malachi 3 6, for I am the Lord, Jehovah, I change not. Amen. Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Acts 10, 34, no respecter of persons. 
Jesus said, I, God is no respecter of persons. Amen. If he heals one, it's his will to heal all. Glory to God. Many, 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 many people believe that God can. Fewer believe that he will. And even fewer believe that not only will he, but that he has already, he already has and is extremely desirous for, he, for us to receive what he has already given and made ours. Amen. Say this, God's promises are a revelation of what God is eager to do for me. Amen. Amen. Many believe in God's great power. Many do believe in God's great power. Amen. But not, not many are convinced that God is desirous uh, to channel that power unto us. Let's read Ephesians. This, this prayer that we pray. I'm going to read it quickly, Ephesians 1, 17 through 19. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what riches, uh, the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness, say exceeding greatness, of his power to usward, and then there's a qualification, who believe. Amen. So this prayer that we pray, it is so powerful that we're asking the spirit of wisdom and revelation to flood the eyes of our heart with light so that we can know some things. And it talks about the power. What is the exceeding greatness of his power... To usward, who believe. Amen. Oh, amen. All right, let's move on. Proverbs 4, 20 through 22. In the Amplified, uh, God's word is medicine. What, did I say it wrong? Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, Proverbs 4, <clears throat> 20 through 22 says, my son, attend to my words, consent and submit to my sayings. Let them not depart from your sight. Keep them in the center of your heart, for they are life to those who find them. Healing, and uh, in the margin it says, medicine and health to all their flesh. Oh, glory to God. I mean, this is, this is a passage that we should have underlined, highlighted, circled. Attend to my words. For my words, they are life to those, not to everybody, but those who find them. So we've got to have enough interest to find them. Amen. So his words are life to those who find them and health or medicine to our flesh. How many of you have ever taken a prescription? <clears throat> the doctor prescribed some. So there's some that didn't raise their hand. Really, is there anyone in here that's never, never taken a prescription? Pastor. <clears throat> All right. And so the, uh, well, okay. So um, the doctor prescribes, right? And, and he prescribes, take one a day or take twice a day or take two pills once it, Right. So there is a way that the doctor prescribes. And if we've gone to the doctor to resolve something in our body, then we are going to follow how he prescribed for us to take the medication. Is that right? All right. Well, this scripture tells us that God's word, God's word is the healing medicine for us to take. And if we are needing healing, we may need to up uh, the doses that we're taking. If we're needing healing to manifest in our body, then we need to up the dosage of how much of the healing seeds of God's word that we're planting in our hearts and tending to. 
Amen. It's just like Pastor talked about the watermelon on Sunday. And, you know, we all want a watermelon. We all want the fruit. We all want the harvest. But the harvest came from a seed. The harvest came from a seed. So for healing to manifest in our body, we have to plant healing seeds of God's word. Glory to God. Okay, I'm going fast because I really want to get through to some stuff. Uh, we said this last week. Medical science aids healing through physical means by administering medicine into the physical body. God's divine healing is spiritual. It is administered through the human spirit. All right? So what does that mean? We don't check, again, we don't check our body when we ask for healing to see if we are healed. We check the word of God. And we plant the healing seeds of God's word in our spirit man. And we can expect a harvest. Mark 4 tells us that Satan, the devourer, is after one thing. And he's after the word. He's after the word because it's the word. That's, and this is not just healing. This is anything in our life. It is the planting of the word that's going to bring us a harvest of life. Amen. Jesus said in John 6... 63, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> All right, I'll save that part for next week. Um, no, I'm not. We're going to do it right now. Say, come on, Mona. Teach me the word. Amen. So I can receive a harvest of healing. God's will. God's will for you. God's will for you is to be healed and whole. Amen. So uh, Luke 1, if you'll go to Luke 1, and we're go I'm going to read a few scriptures here. But this is the account of Gabriel coming to Mary. Verse 31 of Luke 1, it says, And listen, Gabriel, did I say Gabriel a while ago? Okay, good. Uh, Gabriel came and said, And listen, you will become pregnant and will give birth to a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. Um, 34, And Mary said to, this, to the angel, How can that, this be since I have... Uh, it says no intimacy with a man or a husband. How can this be since I'm not married and I'm not having sex? How can this be? It's an impossible situation for me to become pregnant. Then the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Let's go to uh, verse 37. And it says, For with God nothing shall be impossible. So we see here that Gabriel brought a word. He brought a word to Mary. He brought a word. So whatever it is, you know, you may be facing something. Uh, just like Mary said, how can this be? How, how can this be since I know not a man? You may have gotten a report from the doctor. How can this be? The doctor says it's impossible. How, does this, how can this be? The doctor says that, that it's fatal, that there is no cure. How can this be? And we're going to see what Mary did. Again, verse 37 said, For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Mary came into agreement with the word from God that Gabriel brought. She came into agreement with it. She, and, and she said, be it unto me. She opened her mouth and she said something. She came into agreement with the word and she said, be it unto me according to your word. The same with healing. 
It's the same with the healing of your body. God brings us words in here. His healing word. We must come in. We can't sit. We cannot sit and just keep waiting and keep waiting and keep waiting for God to do something. We come into agreement with his word. Be it unto me. Be it unto me, God. Be it unto me according to your word. Oh, hallelujah. And just as, listen, Mary became pregnant with the Son of God by coming into agreement with his word. By coming into agreement with his word. And it's just like us. We become pregnant with the promises of God. We receive them by faith in our spirit man. And just as John tells us that the word grew, uh, the word grew inside Mary and he became flesh. John 1, that's what John 1 tells us. And the word became flesh. We receive the promises of God in exactly the same way. We, we come into agreement with the word. We say, be it unto me according to your word. And we become pregnant. And we become pregnant in our spirit man uh, with the promise of God. And if we'll tend to that seed... If we will tend to that seed and not allow the enemy to steal that seed of his word out of us, then we will have that, that promise will become flesh or it will manifest in this natural realm. Amen. Amen. Psalms 107 20 says, He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their, destru their distractions. So again, when we receive divine healing, we don't check our body to see if we are healed. We check the word. We check the word. If we check our bodies to see if we're healed, we're walking by sight. We'll believe and we don't want to be... We don't want to say we'll believe we're healed when our bodies tell us that we're healed instead of believing we're healed because of what God said. This is called fighting the good fight of faith because there will be thoughts and there will be symptoms that come to oppose the word. And so we've got to know how to stand firm, how to lay hold of, and how to fight the good fight of faith. Amen. So I wanted to relay a couple of things here. Pastor Keith Moore told a story. Uh, many of you may, may have heard him say this, but, but he was telling a story about when he was going to Bible school, and he and his wife and uh, some of the other Bible, Bible school students just got together in the apartment, and they were talking about, uh, he said, theology. And so whatever the point was that they were discussing, they just all decided that it was indeed difficult to understand. And the more they talked about it and the more they talked about it, just the, the darker, I mean, and they just, they just left and they just ended the night with, yeah, this is just hard. This is just difficult to understand. How many of y'all heard him tell that story? A few of us. So God's answer to him, he said, Keith, he said, do you want to know the answer uh, to what y'all were talking about tonight? And he said, yes, Lord, I do. And he said, well, you're farther away from it right now than you were before the night started. What does that mean? That means when we get in situations and we talk about what we don't know, and we not just talk about, we meditate on it. I don't understand. I don't understand why. I don't understand this. I don't understand. I just don't understand why that happened. I don't understand why this isn't happening. I don't understand. The more we talk about and the more we meditate on what we don't know and what we don't understand, uh, the darker we're going to get. The darker it's going to get, what we must do is we must go to the Word and we must keep our attention on what we do know. We keep our attention on uh, God's Word that He has revealed to us. 
and we stay in that place. And in that place of light, the Holy Spirit can start connecting dots for us to bring light on things we might not understand. Amen. So we don't want to meditate on. We don't want to have discussions with uh, what we don't know or what we don't have or why isn't this working or do you understand? The more we talk like that, the more we will stay in darkness. Does that make sense? All right. In light, more light comes. Psalms 119.30 says, The unfolding of your words give light. It impacts understanding. I'm sorry. It doesn't impact. It imparts. It imparts understanding to the simple. So the unfolding of your words give light. Not these deep theological discussions. The unfolding of your word brings light. Amen. If we're in a dark place and if we're in a pit, we need light. We don't need to be stroking our, our um, intelligence guru uh, in what we think we know and don't know. We need light. Amen. Amen. All right. I want to read <clears throat> one more thing. And then we're going to close. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> All right. There is a God's side and man's side to every miracle and victory. God's part is to work. Man's part is to believe. We cannot do God's work and God cannot do our believing. God is faithful to his word. He will always do his part. So we must do our part, which is to believe and to trust that he does the work. Operating the principles of faith is much like playing a game of checkers. God moves, then we move. God moves, then we move. God cannot move out of his turn. Once he has made his move, then we must make our move of faith. Regarding your healing, God already made the first move by laying your sickness and diseases on Jesus. Now it's your move. You must make your move of faith. That is, you must speak and act in line with his word. Faith is acting like the word of God is true. Come on now. Faith is acting like the word of God is true. So we don't just say we believe. Faith is action. Faith is action. I heard a minister say that Smith Wigglesworth, he, he, just, he would just walk from side to side on a platform and say, faith is an act. Faith is an act. Faith is an act. We have to give action to what we say we believe in here. That's when we meet the power of God. Amen. Release your faith through speaking God's word <coughs> over your body. Say what he says. That your sickness and disease was already laid on Jesus. Hold fast to God's word, saying it over yourself every day, despite any opposing pain or symptoms. Believe that he has already healed you when he laid your sickness and disease on Jesus, and that you are receiving that purchased healing now. When we pray and when we release our faith, we receive healing now. Where does God administer the healing? In our spirit man. We're not checking our body to see if it actually worked. We're holding on to the faith of God's word. All right? So when we pray, we believe that we receive. When we pray, we believe that we receive. That it is ours now. Pregnant in our spirit man with the truth of God's word. That will be made flesh if we don't let go of it. Hallelujah. Faith is an act, not a feeling. So act like you're healed. And thank God for your healing, regardless of what you may feel or see. Just because there are symptoms in your body, just because there are symptoms of your body, after you have released your faith to receive healing, does not, be, does not mean that healing is not yours. Amen. Amen. Faith believes what God says regardless of what feelings, symptoms, or circumstances may say. Don't believe anything more than you believe what God says. 
So when we release our faith and we believe that receive, we receive, and this is, this is for healing, this is for finances, this is for anything that we find is God's will for us in his word. When, uh, when we release our faith and we believe that we receive, healing is mine now. I thank you, Lord. I thank you that the Lord Jesus took in order to carry away my weaknesses and my infirmities, and he bore away my diseases. Father, I thank you for the gift of healing. I thank you for the gift of healing that it is mine now. And we spend our time in thanksgiving and praise, acting like we believe what God just told us. Amen. We hang on to it. We give him thanks and we give him praise. Hallelujah. God's power will meet us when we act in faith. And we must act again and again until we see the manifestation of what we're believing for. It's not a one and done. It's a life of faith, right? And again, just a warning. The devil's going to challenge you. He, the symptoms are going to either come back or still be there. And, and the enemy's going to say through those sim symptoms, see there, it doesn't really work. See there, God really didn't heal you. And we have to know how to answer that. Amen. <clears throat> so God's power will meet us when we act in faith and we must act again and again until we see the manifestation of what we're believing for. That was the testimony of a mother whose little boy was confined to a wheelchair. Doctors stated that he would never walk again. He would always be crippled. But every day that mother would take her son out of his wheelchair and gently pull him around the floor on his stomach for an hour, thanking God for having healed him. She did this faithfully for approximately one year. One day, as she went to remove her son from his wheelchair, the boy jumped out and took off running. Why? Because his mother defied that which tried to bind. Faith is an act. It's a lifestyle of acting. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Stand, stand to your feet. I want to lead you in a prayer, and then, uh, Pastor, if you'd like, I'll turn it over to you. No? Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I, I want to ask you to um, <clears throat> just say this. Say this prayer after me, all right? Father, I call you my healer. Yeah, close your eyes. Don't look at me. Father, I call you my healer. You are the God that healeth me. I thank you that you took my sicknesses, my diseases, and my weaknesses, and you carried them away. Since you've already given me healing with faith in you and faith in your word, I receive it now. I take it now. It's mine now. I'm not trying to get it. It's mine now. No matter what I see, no matter what I feel, I will occupy myself with your healing word, keeping it before me, in my heart, and in my mouth. And as I do, I believe the healing power of your word will be made flesh. It will manifest in my body. Hallelujah. Father, we worship you in your house tonight. We say thank you. Thank you that you are a healing Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that your word is life unto us. Thank you for healing, Lord. We thank you. We thank you for the healing of bodies. We thank you for bodies that are made right in the name of Jesus. And so I apply the blood of Jesus over every heart and over every person right now. And I thank you that, that the word that has gone forth, that, that it will not be plucked up. 
it will not be plucked up, rooted out by the enemy. Father, I thank you for the spirit of faith. I thank you for strength in the hearts of your people. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father, in that as we stand upon your word, as we stand upon your word, healing will manifest. Healing will manifest. And so we thank you for it. We give you honor and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, we're going to occupy ourselves with praising him. We're going to occupy ourselves. We're not, we're not a people trying to get. He's already given and we've already received. So we're going to spend our time saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that I am healed. Thank you, Jesus, that I am healed. It's so good to be healed. <laughs> Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Y'all good? All right. All right. We love you guys, and uh, we'll see you on Sunday. Amen.